You've known me longer than anyone else. Such knowledge is too wonderful. Stand it. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I can't even comprehend it. But I know you see. the depths where I could make my bed But I never went high and see You're so good at finding me Only lost in the mystery Of the depth of your love Your hand will hold me still Even where Even where my world is shaking Your hand will hold me still I'm fearfully Hey guys, Anthony and Jacynthia coming to you from Oasis Live. Um, happy to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. And now for our announcements. Join us on the 23rd and 24th of April 2021 for Steve and Wendy Backland who will be um, hosting the Abounding Hope and Joy Conference. That is an online event. There is no specific charge, but we are encouraging you to please book and make an offering for the payment for this conference. Um, and if you do so, do so by the 18th of April. Mm -hmm. 
Um, second on our announcements is that we have our upper room sessions that are taking place on Wednesdays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. We are encouraging you. This is a time about putting Jesus first, getting into his presence in prayer and worship. Hey guys, please join us in our worship, uh, an important part of our service, connecting with our Lord and Savior. And so we hand over to the worship team.
Good morning and welcome Oasis Church. It is such a great privilege as always to meet together in the presence of God. And today is a really special Sunday because we get to be together in our church building at Oasis Campus. We get to worship God together and it is so exciting to be together. So if you are not able to join us in person, I'm glad you can join us online. We are going to be starting a new series at Oasis called Welcome Home. And I think that is such a beautiful, amazing topic as we get to be back together again. But in this series, we are going to explore, take a deep dive into and look at who it is to be kingdom people at Oasis Church, the people that God has called us to be in this place, in this time right now, the people who carry his heart, the people who look like him and reflect him. And so today I get to speak about the amazing topic. One of the things that makes us so beautiful and unique is that as people, we value the presence of God. You know, without the presence of God, we really are just the same as everybody else. It is the presence of God that sets us apart. It is the presence of God that allows people to see that there is something different because we are not people who are just born of the flesh, but we are people who are born of the spirit. So let's look together in scripture. John 3 verse 16, it says, here is the way that God loved the world. Here it is. Here's the explanation. He gave his only unique son as a gift so that now everyone who believes in him will not perish, but experience everlasting life. You know, the thing about faith, the thing about belief, the thing about actually fixing our heart on something is that it comprises a number of, of components. Number one, it means acceptance. Acceptance that something says what it, it, it is, what it says it is. It means embracing something as truth. It also speaks about a union and a, a bringing together of God and his word. And it's an inner confidence that God alone is enough. So in the scripture, it's saying God so loved the world. It's a knowledge that the love of God is enough, that the fullness of God is enough, that who God says he is, is enough. It means that if we believe that he is enough, that if we believe what he has for us is enough, that we will not perish, but that we will have everlasting life. I remember as a little girl thinking that everlasting life happened the moment you died and went to be with Jesus, that you could live an everlasting life. But the truth of the matter is everlasting life starts that moment where you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. It tells us in John 17 verse 3, now this is eternal life. Here is a definition for us, that they know you, talking about the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. The definition of eternal life is to know God. Isn't that incredible? Here we have the most beautiful opportunity not to just be saved, not to just be called the people of God, but to be drawn into an intimate relationship with him where we know him, where we experience him, where we can look deeply into his eyes and know his character, know his thoughts, know what he loves and what he doesn't love. It's a really deep beautiful intimate thing it's a picture of two becoming one it's a beautiful picture of intimacy and that is what the presence of God is it defines our very salvation because we are saved because of the son of God because of the great love of God we get to be in the presence of God you know, we should always look back in the Bible to the first time it ever mentions a concept to know what the concept really means. And the first time the Bible ever mentions the word love is in Genesis 22 verse 2. It's the same time that it mentions worship for the first time. It's amazing how the two of them are so hugely interrelated. And it was the moment where Abraham was asked to give Isaac up as a sacrifice to God, something that God had given to Abraham. Abraham was asked to give back to God, which is the essence of worship. But it also uses the word love here. And when we look back at the ancient Hebrew pictology of the word love, it's made up of four pictures. The first picture is a picture that represents God the first. So it is God in his fullness, God the Father, everything that is of God, that is from God, that is through God. The second picture is the word hey, and that word hey means to reveal, 
and it also represents the Holy Spirit. The third picture is sun. It is actually a picture of the sun, of Jesus being the sun. And the fourth picture is hay again. It's of the Holy Spirit. And it shows us that the love in its very nature and its very essence form is God revealing himself through his son by the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? The Father, the Spirit, the Son, the Spirit. It's like the Spirit that ties it all together. Love in its fullness, in its unconditionalist, in, in its experience of the fullness of God is the whole Godhead that is revealed to us. When God sent his Son because he loved us so much, it wasn't just an act or a gesture. It was the fullness of what love is to him that he gave us and it was revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. It's the essence of our salvation to know him fully, to have his presence with us. The fact that we will never, ever, ever be alone because he is always with us. Guys, this is powerful. This is incredibly mighty. And we are people who value and hold the presence of God so lightly in our hands. You know, if you had to hold a crystal vase, you would not just throw it around and swing it all over the place as if you were holding a plastic cup. No, you would hold it with such care and make sure that nothing bumps you because you've got something really, really precious in your hands. And that's what it means to value the presence of God, to have an understanding and a knowing of how important his presence is to him so that we can carry that same value in our lives. That word presence means face or face to face in the ancient Hebrew. It means the part that turns and looks. You know, I have four kids and life is often very, very busy. And I will often become aware of a little voice in the background that's been trying to tell me something for the last 30 seconds or so. I'm busy doing something, busy cooking, busy talking, busy. And I will become aware of somebody has been trying to tell me something. And I will turn to look and see my four-year-old standing saying, Mom, look at this beautiful flower I picked. Mom, look at this beautiful flower I picked. Mom, look at this beautiful flower I picked. And it's this noise that's going on in the background that I am aware that it's happening, but not actually taking cognizance of its importance. Until I stop and I turn and I look at her or go down to her level and my face is in her face and I go, Tell me about that incredibly beautiful flower you picked. In that instant, everything changes. She doesn't feel ignored. She feels loved. She feels seen. She feels valued. She knows that she is important to me. And it's the same thing about us and the Father. You see, the presence of God is around us all the time. God is omnipresent. But it's almost like in the noise of life and the busyness of life, there's a noise that's going on behind us, but we're not giving it the attention that it needs until we turn our face to it, until we turn our eyes to it, and until we look intently at it. And in that moment, everything changes. Being face to face with God implies a really, really deep intimacy where nothing else is important, where two people are so close to each other, they can feel each other's breath on their cheek. Everything else fades away and nothing else is important. You know, they've done scientific research that the face of a parent, the expression on a parent's face, brings identity and security and understanding into the heart of their child. And the way that they did this, the way that they showed this and modeled this, was that they had a child and their parents and the parent was laughing and joking and, and talking with them and pulling funny faces and turning to look where the child pointed and being totally invested face to face with this child. And then the parent turned away and they turned back to the child, but this time were completely expressionless. They were there, but they were not engaging. They were not invested. They were not involved. There was no recognition in their eyes or in their face of anything that was of love or of excitement. And the child started to try and get their parents' attention, try to do the same things they'd done before, try to point, try to squeal, try to pull funny faces. And eventually the child was so stressed out after just two minutes of their parents' lack of, of involvement or interest in their child. They started squealing and squirming and, and being uncontrollably uh, desperate to try and get their parents' attention. And then the mom turned away and turned back at the child and was fully invested and expressive. And without even touching the child, the child immediately calmed down because there was a sense of belonging that was given just by looking into the face of a parent that was fully accepting, fully loving, 
fully invested in the person in front of them. And it's the same with our Father. You know, when we look deeply into His eyes, just me and you, Lord, we begin to see ourselves in His reflection. We begin to see the way that He sees us, the way that He loves us, the way that He accepts us, the way that we absolutely delight His heart. It's a tragedy to me that as children of God, we still believe that God is angry and doesn't want us to come into his presence. In fact, we are his reward. We are his inheritance. The Bible tells us that he will exchange nations for our life because he loves us so incredibly much. He is so enamored with us. And as we come into his presence and we see that, things in us start to change. As we begin to see his glory and his majesty and the beauty of who he is, we start to change and we start to reflect his likeness. As our face-to-face -face beauty comes together, we see him. We see ourselves in his eyes. We are transformed into his likeness. It's a really, really deep and beautiful intimate moment. We as the people of God have got a carve out time that nobody else knows about. The world has no idea what we value most. What we value most is time in the presence of God. It is the presence of God that is the essence of our salvation. It is the Father that is being revealed to us through the Son by the Holy Spirit that shows us what love really looks like. Let's be honest, the world is looking for love and we have that love inside of us. And it comes from spending that intimate, beautiful moment in the presence of God. You know, when we look deeply into his eyes and we see who he is, things that are impossible all of a sudden become possibilities. Things that were restrictions and limitations all of a sudden are completely removed because we start to see ourselves as people who are spirit people and not people who are flesh people. Jesus said, in John 16 verse 7, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go, the helper will not come, but I will go and I will send him to you. You see, when we speak about valuing the presence of God, hosting the presence of God, living in the presence of God, we're actually speaking about valuing a person, hosting a person, living in the presence of a person. And obviously that person is Holy Spirit. It is the person of truth. It is the person of power. It is the person of freedom. He is the part of the Godhead that reveals the character of God and transforms us into the likeness of Jesus. And if you have confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the Holy Spirit lives within you and is constantly Emmanuel, God with us. The presence of God is constantly with us. It is the essence of our salvation, that we are united again to him and nothing can separate us from that love of God. So why is it that we do not feel the presence of God with us all the time? Why is it that we are not living in the fullness of the presence of God? Let's have a look at the best example of somebody who stewarded the presence of God so incredibly beautifully. And that is obviously Jesus. When Jesus came to earth, he did not come as God with some little God tendencies that he could slip in and out of his Godness. He laid down his deity he laid down his God-like character and he became fully man. It tells us this in Philippians 2 verse 5. It says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to use to his advantage, but rather he made himself nothing. By taking on the very nature of the servant, he was made in human likeness. So here we have Jesus, who is in the world just like you and me, who has normal trials and difficulties and tragedies. He's got family, he's got pressure, he's got financial pressure, he's got relational pressure. He has chosen to experience what life is like as a human. And yet, in his humanness, he understood the importance of being able to host the presence of God really well. He understood the importance of even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. And by taking the hand of the one who is superior, who is above my circumstances, who is raised and sitting in heavenly places, 
he was able to live life from a completely different perspective. The Bible tells us that Jesus only did what he saw his father doing. He was completely man living in right relationship with the father. He valued the presence of God more than he valued life itself. In John 5 verse 19 to 20, Jesus gave them this answer. Verily I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Here is a beautiful scripture that tells us Jesus did not have some amazing supernatural powers that we don't have. He could do nothing by himself, just like you and just like me. We know that even our best attempts to do anything amazing end up being weak at best. It says, because whatever the father does, the son also does. The father loves the son and shows him all that he does. I just love this scripture. The reason God reveals his heart, the reason God reveals who he is, his nature, the reason God reveals his character to us is because he absolutely loves us. It kind of is a picture of a father who is busy servicing a car or changing a tire or learning to play guitar or anything that the father can do with much capability and his little son coming to join him having the son in the room is not helpful the son is going to poke and 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 prod at things that he shouldn't he's going to ask questions he's going to make the whole uh, process so much longer than what it needs to be but the father is there in patience and he shows the son what he's doing because he loves the son the son at this moment may not have the capacity to be able to do what the father does but he does have the capacity to be with the Father. Guys, as new creation people, as the new man, we know that the presence of God is enough. All answers are found in the presence of God. All greatness is found in the presence of God. All renewed thinking is found in the presence of God. God never has to say another word because he's done everything that he can do in sending his son and yet he surrounds us, he wraps his presence around us. We are completely enfolded by the majesty and the greatness of who he is. So in this moment where the father and the son are busy servicing a car together or doing whatever it is that they are doing together, the son is busy learning. And he's asking questions and he's saying, how come you do this? Why do you do that? And the father in his loving kindness and his patience is teaching his son what the father does. And one day when that son grows up and he has to service his own car or play his own instrument, he's going to do what he saw his father doing because he was safe and he was comfortable. He was accepted and he was loved in the father's presence. The scripture goes on to say, Yes, he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. The Father wants to show the Son, which is you and I, even greater works than what Jesus did, so that we will be amazed. And church, I want to say it's time for us to be a church who are amazed by the things that the Father shows us, because it comes from that secret place moment and times in the presence of God. You see, the presence of God is around us all the time, but so often we are not even aware of that presence of God because we just flippantly go through our life in our humanity, in our humanness. But the Bible tells us in John 3 verse 6 that whatever is of the flesh will give birth to flesh, and whatever is of the spirit will give birth to spirit. I want you to stop for a minute and take stock of your own life, the things that you've established that you've done. Does it look a lot like flesh or does it look a lot like spirit? Because that will tell you the place that you are giving birth to things. Is it in your own capacity or is it in an awareness and a unity and a oneness with the spirit of God? It comes from us being aware of the spirit. You know, East Coast Radio is playing right now as we speak. But I can't hear it. I don't know what songs are on there. I don't know what the news broadcast is saying. I don't even know what the weather is <laughs> down the South Coast. But I do know that if I had to tune my radio into East Coast Radio, I would pick up that frequency and I would be able to bop and vibe to the same music that the person who's tuned into East Coast Radio next to me is. 
And it's the same thing with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is accessible to us all of the time. But most of the time, even as believers, even as those who know we have access to the Spirit of God, we are tuned off, our radio is off, and we are not picking up the frequency of what God is wanting to do in our lives. We need to be tuned into what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Holy Spirit is strong. He is powerful. He is a person. He is the revealer of God himself, and yet he will not push his way into our life. We hold with care and with fragility the beautiful presence of God that he's put in our hands. Our relationship with the Godhead starts in the secret place. We are a people who know what the presence of God feels like. We know what the presence of God looks like. We know what the presence of God tastes like. We know what the presence of God sounds like because we have such a deep and personal relationship with him. Our face is so close to his face. We know the color of his eyes. We know the taste of his breath. We know him because God so loved the world. His divine intention was for us to have everlasting and eternal life in a relationship with him where we get to be in his presence. As new creation beings, we take our lead from the Father. We get our identity from the Father. We learn from the Father the same way that a child learns from his parents. We are spirit people. We are not people who live according to the flesh. We are not people who do whatever we feel like doing in the moment. We are people who follow the steps of the Spirit. And the whole New Testament is filled with examples of what it's like to walk in step with the Spirit. It tells us in Galatians 5, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For what the sinful nature desires is contrary to the Spirit. They are in conflict with one another, so that you do not do what you want. If you feel like there are areas in your life where you cannot get breakthrough, guys, I want to say, start to live by the Spirit. Start to focus on the Spirit. Start to be aware on this beautiful, beautiful gift. The Bible tells us it is more precious than rubies or diamonds or gold or silver or any great thing. We have the presence of God that is with us and it is within the presence of God that all goodness flows. So we have this moment where Jesus gets baptized and there's such a beautiful picture of the connection of the Father and the Son and the Spirit all working together in such beautiful harmony. So what happens is Jesus gets baptized and it tells us at that moment the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended. Guys, I want to remind you that we do not live under a closed heaven, that it is hard to get into God's presence. Jesus has already paid the price. The curtain has been torn in two from top to bottom. There is nothing that separates us from the love of God. And the more time you go in to his presence, the more time you dwell in his presence, the more time you experience his presence, the easier it is to get there. Not because his accessibility changes, but because we find ourselves walking on a well-worn path and we know where to go and what to do. And the obstacles in our mind begin to fall away. We are a people who get to be in the presence of God. So as Jesus is getting baptized, the heavens open, the dove descends, and it lands on Jesus. The Bible says it alights on Jesus. It comes on to Jesus. From that moment, Jesus lived with the knowledge and the concept that he had the Spirit with him. He went to places that made the Spirit happy. He did things that made the Spirit delighted. He was led by the Spirit at the Spirit's nudging, at the Spirit's urging. It speaks to us constantly about how Jesus did things out of compassion. He did things that were unordinary and totally not expected of him because he was being led by the Spirit. And Scripture tells us he only did what he saw the Father do. Scripture tells us that the Father speaks things and the Spirit tells us what those things are. We have got to be so deeply plugged into what the Holy Spirit is saying at every minute of the day if we are to be kingdom, new creation people who are connected in the Father, us in Him and He in us. That's how He designed us to live. So the scripture goes on to say in Luke 4 verse 1, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, so now the Spirit has come on Him and He is filled with the Holy Spirit. He leaves the Jordan where He was baptized and He was sent by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit, just the same way that you and I are full of the Holy Spirit. There is no more Holy Spirit to fill us. 
I want to say that again. There is no more Holy Spirit to fill us. It's not like God's given us a little bit of Holy Spirit and trickle feed us. No, no. We have the same amount of Holy Spirit as all the greats in history, as Smith Wigglesworth and Catherine Kuhlman and people who have shaped societies, people who have shaped culture. Why is it that they were able to access the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Because they were aware of the Holy Spirit, because they gave the Holy Spirit the airwaves to be able to access their life and transform them into the likeness of Jesus. The Holy Spirit that you have and the Holy Spirit that I have are no different to the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and he dwells in our mortal bodies so that we can be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Church, let's open our eyes and let's open our ears and let's open our hearts to respond to the Holy Spirit that is brooding over us as we value and hold the presence of God in our hands more importantly than anything else. You know, when you value something, you give your time to it, you give your money to it, you give your relationships to it, you give everything that you are to it. And church, I want to say that we've become a people that kind of check in with the Holy Spirit and check out with the Holy Spirit, but we do not consistently live in communion with him. And it is a gift that is beyond understanding. Let's be a people that starts to give ourselves to him way beyond measure. So Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit fills us for our own good in order for us to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. But it goes on to say this in verse 14. It says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit and news about him spread to the whole countryside. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit for his own good. The Holy Spirit witnesses with our spirit that we are the children of God. He is the seal that guarantees our inheritance. He is the one that tells us what the Father is saying about us. And as Jesus went into that desert and he had an identity wrestle with the enemy, Jesus was not alone. He was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. But when he came out of that desert, it says that he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes upon us for other people. He fills us for ourselves, but he comes upon us for other people, for the world around us to be different. And I want to say, guys, it is time. It is time for us to be the people that are so filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that we overflow and the world around us looks like a different place. Do you know that the church is the answer to all of the decay, the corruption, the filth, and the despair that is going on in the world around us? The church is the answer to those things by the empowering of the presence of God and by the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And it is time that we are so full with that beautiful, intimate relationship that the natural outworking of that is that the world around us is different. I'm reminded of David who killed the lion and he killed the bear by himself when nobody was there, when nobody was watching him. He was not getting any brownie points for that. But he knew who his God was because of the beautiful intimate times he had spent with his God by himself. He knew that God was a God who destroys and annihilates the enemy. He knew that God was a God who protects he knew that God was a God who was faithful to his promises. And when the moment came that the biggest enemy that had paralyzed our whole nation was standing, shouting blasphemous thoughts at him, David just stood and said, it's time. It's time that the God in my secret place becomes the God in public because I know who he is and he knows who I am. How guys? How can we practically become spirit people, people who value the presence of God more than anything else? I've got a couple of things that I want to share with you, and it's not hard. It just is being intentional. First of all, get hungry. Get hungry to be people who walk in the fullness of the spirit. We have an incredible thing called the internet where there are copious amounts of mind-blowing testimonies. What did the scripture say? Things that are there that the Father does to amaze you. Start feeding yourself on these things. Start eating the, the goodness of God, of his presence, of his character. You know, if you want to know what somebody's like, spend a lot of time with him. So spend a lot of time around stories that God is doing, things that God is doing in our very presence. You know, I often think if I had to come into the presence of a famous person who did something amazing, let's say, I don't know, Mother Teresa, who who in her own body served people and gave of herself, I would want to stand really close to her and just listen to everything that she has to say because her life is a testimony of everything that she is. And it's the same thing with Jesus. Fill yourself up with testimonies of everything that he is. The second thing I want to say is read your Bible. 
read your Bible, read the Gospels, read Acts, read every single story that you can possibly find in the Bible of where the presence of God, that beautiful presence of God came in its manifest power and anointing and glory because of people's awareness of it. But don't just read it with a closed mind as if it's a nice story. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. You know, the same spirit of God that was in those stories that happened thousands of years ago. It's not limited by time. And the things that were accessible to them then are the things that are accessible to us now. If we will just say, Holy Spirit, I'm here. I know you're here too. And so won't you teach me about who you are? My heart is open. My mind is open. I want to be transformed into your likeness. What do you want to show me, Jesus? Let's become inquisitive about the things that God wants to do for us. The third thing is, thanksgiving and praise you know it is through thanksgiving that we enter into a realm that is way beyond our understanding i think of jesus with the five loaves and the two fish and the seven thousand people to feed i mean the maths is just completely illogical and yet he takes what is in his hands the little that he has the mere the meager that he has it wasn't even his somebody gave it to him he takes the five loaves and the two fish and he gives thanks And he's like, I'm taking this into the realm of your presence because I know that in your presence there is always more than enough. And we all know what happens in that story. Everybody went home satisfied and there were 12 baskets left over. Does this excite you guys? These are the people that God has called us to be. Worship. Worship that even if we could look into the eyes of our beautiful Savior for all of eternity, we would never even tip the iceberg of how incredible he actually is. Let's find ourselves being inquisitive about the character of God and worshipping him for it. You know, the definition of worship is giving back to him what he gave to us in the first place. It is that beautiful picture of absolute, total surrender. Not because I am worthy, but because he is worthy. He is worthy of it all. And church, I want to encourage you, get yourself some really good worship music and turn your heart and your affection and your attention to him. Sometimes worship and surrender means giving him your finances. That's the thing that he gave you. Sometimes worship and surrender is giving him your dreams, your choices, your expectations, your disappointments. Sometimes it's singing songs. Sometimes it's lying before him in sweet surrender. It doesn't really matter what it is. It is the heart posture that says everything I have is yours you know the father said to the oldest son in the story of the prodigal son he said everything i had was yours anyway and you are always with me that's the lord that we serve everything that is his is ours and we choose to give it back to him in sweet and beautiful surrender because the presence of god is more important and more valuable to me than anything that i can hold tightly onto my hands i choose to surrender everything that i am because being with him is enough. And lastly, to become aware of his presence every single moment of every single day. Guys, be aware. Wake up in the morning and be aware. So many times throughout my whole entire day of being busy, 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 I get to the end of the day and I realize, Holy Spirit, I tagged you on to the end of my day instead of being led by you every single moment because so much of what I did was just out of my own flesh out of my own capabilities out of my own natural being Jesus never did anything that he didn't see the father doing we need to be people who are aware of the Holy Spirit so practice practice being aware of the Holy Spirit get out of your car at a supermarket put your mask on and say Holy Spirit I know you with me show me where to go show me what to do show me who I need to speak to I'm not here to just fulfill my own agenda I'm here to fulfill your agenda because the more aware you become of the Holy Spirit the easier it is to just follow him. But if we don't practice and we don't pursue him with everything inside of us, it's just going to be something that we constantly miss. We constantly are going to think it's for other people, other people who are more spiritual, other people who have bigger spirits, other people who are just are just better than me. That is a lie. The truth of the matter is we all have the same Holy Spirit and the more aware we are of him, the more we will grow in him and the more space he will have in me to transform me into the likeness of God. So I'm just going to go over those five things quickly. Become hungry. Become hungry, guys. What you feed yourself with is what you hunger for. Secondly, read the word with an experienced mindset and not just as a story, but as a, I'm I'm really unavailable, Holy Spirit. Do what you want to in me. 
Thirdly, thanksgiving and praise. Fourthly, worship. Guys, our intimate places with him are more important than anything we will do out in the world. What we do out in the world is an overflow from what we have already done in our bedroom. And fifthly, become aware of his presence in our everyday life. We have got to pursue the presence of God with everything inside of us because whatever we value, we give ourselves to. And to be the kingdom people that God has called us to be in this place, in this community, in this town, we are people who value the presence of God above anything else. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your beautiful anointing. I thank you that you never leave us and that you never forsake us. I thank you that we are never alone. You are with us. Holy Spirit, I want to bless this church community with a ravenous hunger for your presence. A jealousy for more of an experience of who you are than what we've ever had before. People who change the world around us because of a oneness with you, in you and through you. Your presence is the very essence of our salvation. Thank you for your incredible love that takes our breath away. May we know what love really looks like, not in our own infinite understanding. But may we know what love looks like because we've encountered you. Jesus, we are hungry for you. We are a people who value your presence. Teach us how to do that well, that honors you, that ministers to you, that brings delight to your heart. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Have the most incredible week. Spend time with the Spirit. And I wait in expectation to hear the things that He teaches you because the God that we serve is absolutely incredible. Hey, thank you, Johnny, for that amazing word that's definitely in season, that's definitely encouraged us and built us up. And guys, for you out there, if you feel you need any contact or you'd like somebody to pray with you, please feel free to contact the church and numbers will appear on, on, on your screen. We'd love to hear from you. Any feedback regarding what God's doing in your life, please get in contact with us. Closing out from Anthony and Jacintha in Howick. So